I hope you're happy with yourself. I thought I could go to bed tonight, but no. I saw your video, James. And I took a shower, and I thought I was going to go to bed, but I got that song stuck in my head. And so that means I have to reply to your video before I can go to sleep. So I'm doing it in my jambos. I hope you're happy. Okay, so... <laughs> Y'all know who I am, of course. The issue with empiricism and verifying God and reality, this whole discussion. Now, he brings up several good points. But I think there's a few things that he's missing. Um, when it comes to the claim about God exists and then verifying that empirically, and then uh, the claim that we can know reality, or in other words, um, what we experience and what the, the model that we draw on our minds about reality is accurate, correct. It's not a, that we're, what we're experiencing is not an illusion of some sort. The problem is that these two different claims are completely different in nature. And the large problem with improving the claim that uh, uh, we can know reality um, with empiricism uh, would be circular at best because everything, every evidence uh, that you would present uh, with that being accurate would have to already assume or accept some form of empiricism. So there is a inherent circularity when it comes to uh, that particular issue, um, and I think I think it's prudent to bring up Goodell's theorem because with Goodell's theorem, uh, it states that there, with any set of axioms or things that you have given within a system, there are things that you can prove, but there are also things that you cannot prove, and it's normally the things that you start out. Uh, assuming in the first place. So there is no axioms or set of axioms that we can in, in turn use to prove every single axiom or every single uh, th thing out there. So there, I think that is where the uh, <clears throat> sort of the weakness of empiricism lies because the part of the very thing uh, that we're assuming that we are using to know things about reality. Now, the problem is, why is it valid to use empiricism to talk about God? Well, now, if you only use a purely philosophical standpoint in discussing God, um, the, the, you know, you can make a structured argument, you can make logical reasons and good sound premises, but the problem with logical uh, arguments is that if your premise is wrong, there is something that is factually wrong about it, then of course the argument is not true, even though it may be sound. And that's what empiricism does. It verifies the argument itself. The thing about God is, is when proven certain things, uh, certain things that we can know, there, there's things that we know abstractly or a priori. Empiricism can't touch those things. And so it's reasonable to use philosophy uh, in order to know those things. But the problem in what James is presenting is saying that we should ignore empiricism and use just pure philosophy. But God is not an abstract. God is something um, a part of reality, and that's what empiricism does. So God lies squarely within the reality. So if you say God exists, you're not talking about an abstract concept like you are with numbers or the law of identity or, or some sort of metaphysical concept. Now, there are a lot of arguments that attempt to make God an abstract concept like um, the transcendental argument 
or the uh, or ontology. Both of these fail very miserably for good reasons. God cannot be an abstract concept, but an object that exists in reality. And so, that's why God has to be judged by empiricism. You know, I know there's problems with understanding reality uh, or understanding that our consciousness has an accurate representation of reality through empiricism, but regardless of that, God still must submit to the standard of empiricism. And that's my argument. So, peace, good night.